You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. Enough? Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hi there, ho there, everybody. And how are you doing on this Freaker Friday evening? Well, at least evening for me. For some people around the world, it's it's really, really early morning. And some people, it's just getting into late afternoon. So, ah, it is a Freaker Friday here on Grammy's Rocket Chair. And yeah, climb aboard and buckle up, because... <laughs> I push buttons, and that's not always a good thing. Just saying. But we, oh, you know, and you're also, you know, if you're listening, I'm sure you know where you're listening, but just in case anybody's never listened before to the live version, which, do you, is this live or is this Memorex? I'm sure I could break a glass, but it's because I dropped it. Uh <laughs> This is on reallibertymedia.com, channel 10. Also on the rlmradio.xyz site, RLM Spreaker channel. Later on the RLM YouTube and BitChute channels and several other channels that Grimmy's got us plugged into. Thank you, Grim, for all that you do. I can't thank you enough. You know, it's like you give me some place to play. <laughs> and y'all actually put up with me too that's what really amazes the hell out of me it's like you listen to me just blather on for a couple hours i appreciate that <laughs> did you know this is according to simon sinek life changes for the better when we realize that we don't have to know everything and we don't have to pretend that we do i like that i like that one Push them buttons, baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm riding on my rocket chair. I needed to sit down because I spent most of the uh, day out pulling weeds. And it wasn't that, you know, it's not that I had a whole lot. It's just that they were starting to grow in between things that I wanted to grow, like my amaranth and my um, hollyhocks and uh, onions and carrots and all that fun stuff. So I basically had assumed the weed pulling position for most of the day today. And man, are my hands sore already. Wee! But hey, I got exercise. I got some sunshine. Got to be outside. Got to have uh, all of that crap from the grain elevator blowing over my direction. Yeehaw! I'll bet I'll be sneezing my lungs out tomorrow. But eh, what the hey? I did get to spend some time outside, but now it's nice to be able to be inside in a cool house and playing with you guys. So, let's go see what's going on on Twitter. Twitter! Oh, I got to tell you guys. By the way, thank you to all my new followers. I got a couple of new followers over here on Twitter. Thank you ever so much, and I'm sorry. And uh, you probably won't be around for long. I have a tendency to go through them pretty fast. Um, Let's see, new tweets here. There was something, because I follow the real Donald Trump, just for shits and giggles, if for no other reason. But uh, I got a little notification from the real Donald Trump that he had posted something. And, oh my God, I found myself actually agreeing with him. It's one of those broken clock moments here, peeps. And he says... Donald J. Trump, at Real Donald Trump, over on Twitter. Social media giants are silencing millions of people. Can't do this, even if it means we must continue to hear fake news like CNN, whose ratings have suffered gravely. People have to figure out what is real and what is not, without censorship. I have to agree with that one. I really do, and it's like, holy crap anoli. Dude, the Donald actually said something that I wholeheartedly agree with. People need to learn for themselves how to recognize what is BS and what is not. You know, the only that's the only way you're going to 
it's the only way you're really going to get around along in this world is to figure out what's BS and what isn't. So that's over here on Twitter, and thank you, Cowboy. Uh, yeah, Cowboy wasn't over here. He's on the other one. Um, Vinny and Gary L and and uh, Barman for tweeting me out. I really do appreciate it, you guys. Over here on Fakey Book, Gary L has been posting like a madman, and he's been posting some good stuff. Thank you, Gary, for doing all of that. Uh, let's see. Over on Mines, I did find something really cool over here on Mines. And I'm just going to go ahead and share the link so y'all can play with it yourself. Uh, it is kind of interesting. It's one of those things where if yes, then go here. If no, then go here. Whoa, wait a minute. Hey, that's starting to make sense. What the hell? Okay, over on that FN site, Freedoms Network, once again, thank you, Grimner, for sharing it over here and letting everybody know that, yeah, the crazy old lady has grabbed grabbed her, um, what is that called? Joystick. Huh. Yeah, all you guys with filthy minds, you just think whatever you wish to think. But that's what I steer with, and then I push buttons <laughs> as well. So, yeah, this could get bumpy. Mm. But thank you, Grimmy for posting that over here on the FN site, freedomsnetwork.com, for those of you that don't know what FN site is. And come on over, check it out. A lot of fun. Cool people over here. Uh, let's see. Okay, I've been to Twitter. I've been to Facebook. I've been to Mines. I've been to FN site. Let's go over here to realliberty.org, the new social media site, and I actually enjoy it immensely. I haven't been able to play a whole heck of a lot lately because I've been playing catch up from helping other people last week. So, tending to my business today. Um, actually, for the last couple of days, I've been tending to my business. Thank you once again. RLM over here on RLO for sharing that I am on right now. Kind of scary. Kind of scary. Um, and thank you, Grimmy and Barman over here. And a big special thank you to Ant for getting this site up and running. You to bomb. You to bomb. Okay, now to the place where you need to be if you want to give me static. Because I know if you're listening in on Spreaker, you can do the chatty thing over on Spreaker. But yeah, I have crap internet. Tin can, kite string, and a little bit of duct tape. Just because things get wonky out here in the wind. But uh, come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. Give me some shit. People in the chat room will probably jump in with you or they'll play monkey pile on you you never know but pull up your big girl panties or your big boy tidy whities and come on over and give me some static because i'll give it to you right back honest and for true I, that's kind of sort of the way i roll so i'm going to go ahead and close twitter down just because i'm having entirely too many things now i've got to what come on don't be giving me that shit I got to get to this one just because I found it over on Twitter. Oh, wait. No. You know what I got to do? I got to get over to RLM. Yes, I do. Is it Grimmy's birthday? Is it? Grimmy, I missed it. Happy birthday, Grim. I'd sing to you, but most people say, no, that's singing at people. So I won't do that to you this time. <laughs> but happy birthday, Grimner, and thank you once again for all that you do. You are the gift that keeps on giving, hun. Now, and speaking of, Barman right up top over here in the chat, closely followed by Grimner, the birthday boy. Although, was it a couple days ago, hon? Did I miss it? Am I a little slow on the uptake? Okay, that was a rhetorical question. Excuse me. For some reason, I was thinking September, but it's my little brother that's in September. Okay. Well, happy birthday, sweetheart. Also, the lovely Moose Girl is here. Hey, Moosey. Uh, so, are Grim and Moose going to be doing the Freakers Ball tonight, or is it going to be another Balls to the Wall? Because Moose is showing off that she has a life again. I see how you are, Moose. I am so envious. I would say jealous, but I'm not really jealous. But it is kind of, yeah. Moosey's got a life, and I have weeds. 
It's okay. I'm making progress. I also see the lovely Kate is here. Hey, Kate, you shared something really pretty cool earlier, and I'm going to get to that. Where was that? That you, hmm, scrolling, squirrel. Do I have it open even? Oh, I'll bet I put it in my, I bet I put it in my pocket. Phantom is here. The guy that did my, it is today. Sweet, sweet, awesome sauce. Um, was, is, whatever. Today is the anniversary of the day that you grace the world with your presence. Thank you ever so much, kind kind dear. Um, Phantom is the one that did my intro for the radio. Thank you once again, Phantom, for being so absolutely spectacular. Asmo is here, as well as a lovely Beth Z. I also see a Chloe in the chat. Got a double dip of Chloe going on, actually. Chalcedony is here, as well as the lovely Cycles. Cycles, what are you doing up so late, sweetheart? Um, looky there, there's Colfax 101, as well as Cyborg Noodle. May you be touched with his noodly goodness. Beetle just joined in. Hi, Beetle. Long time no see, sweetheart. I know you can't hear me because you just joined in, but I'm going to say hey to you anyway. Uh, let's see. Oh, did you know today is a Pastafarian Holy Day? Yes, it is. Fridays are Pastafarian Holy Days. May you be touched by his noodly goodness. I also see D DC as well as Dakota, Echelon, and Frumpy. Hi, Frumpy. How are you? How you doing? Gooberzilla is also here. What the hell, Beetle? Where you been hiding, darling? Gee, so Pete. Gooper's been a chitty chatting and sharing all kind of stuff over here in the RLM chat. Uh, I'm here, kind of, sort of, maybe. Gromit is also here, as how, as well as Hal W O P R. Is that like? Um, should I be concerned? Um. Hmm. You know, like Hal from. Um, oh shit! It was just there. <laughs> oh, 2001: A Space Odyssey. I hope that's not Hal. Daisy, Daisy. Yeah. <clears throat> Moving along. I be Don C is also here as well as Java, 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 Java Doctor Two. JJ's no, 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 JJ's that wonderful Scottish feller from over there in Scotland who has webcom.co.uk. Awesome job, JJ's, and thank you ever so much for being logged in. At least, if not, you actually listening. Hi, sweetheart. Keep your kilt nice and tucked. Don't want to give anybody a flash peek. I also see Juana Taco is here, as well as Kozu, Meister Brar. Hi, Woody. How are you? Moy, 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 moy is also in the chat box, as well as Pox Pox, Poxified, and Poxophone. Got three times the pox going on over here tonight. Pompa Pond Sauce and the Lovely Rain. We also have RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. I see Rob Works is logged in, but I don't see him. Hal, oh, Hal Whopper. Thank you, Sock Puppet. I was somewhat concerned that maybe, just maybe, it was Hal from 2001. Then I, then I would really have to be worried. Uh... Ooh, from, ooh, that's not cool, Graham. I don't want to go there. Let's not play that game, okay? Shall we play a game? I can think of all kinds of fun games to play that don't involve any kind of kaboomies. Uh, let's see, where was I at? Rob Works, yeah. I don't see him in here. He must be logged in, but not really doing much of anything. Sock Puppet! Sock is a button pusher as well. He likes pushing buttons. He's kind of kinky like that. I also see the F-Bominator Skittle is in the house. A bot, but still, an F-Bominator bot. Trust No One is also here, and I see he shared, or he joined over on realliberty.org awesome trust and to round out the crew the one the only the Vinny, who always does things easily <laughs> i had to throw that in there Vinny, just because i know it trips your trigger Vinny's triggered triggered um <coughs> yay pippy's there Yay, yay, yay. Okay. Where was I going to go? Oh, yeah. I saw this on Twitter, 
and I thought, yes, we're going to go here. It's from Newsweek, by the way. It's supposed to be one of those reputable places, but God only knows anymore. Hell, half of them are like, really? Uh, it's no wonder the print media is going to shit. Actually, my mother said that she subscribes to several magazines simply because she doesn't want them to stop printing, which I understand that, and she does enjoy reading them, and uh, I think she gets Discover Magazine, and um, the Smithsonian, and I don't think she gets Newsweek, but she, uh, I don't know, but she's, she's got several of them that come to her house. None of them, they're girly ones. She doesn't get girly mags. Let's see. Lying sack of what? Who's a lying sack of? I hope not. In any case, you know, some people lie like a rug and people walk all over them because of it. Mm. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so Newsweek in their health section. FDA approves. Approves psychedelic magic mushroom ingredients psilocybin for depression trial. You know why they're approving it? Because they're wanting to figure out a way to synthesize it. And they don't, you know, you idiots don't realize that when you synthesize this shit, it no longer works the way original. Okay, what the hell is going on, Vivaldi? Am I going to have to close you and start you up again? I think I am. Because you're being a poo-poo head, just like opera was. So, uh, you have speakers on the monitor, but it hums. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I'm reopening my Valdi. I know my Dell data safe is not logged in. Come on. Wakey, wakey. Vivaldi. Ooh, barman's passing out joints. Sweet. Come on. My browser is being a poo-poo head. Actually, it's probably my computer. I probably should have shut it down last night. <laughs> Instead of just putting it to sleep. But, ah, it's an old baby and it's okay. It's okay, sweetheart. You'll be fine. Okay, come on. <sighs> hmm. Well, I can't think of anything to talk about. I know. That's shocking, isn't it? Let's see. Clock is broken. Whose clock is broken? I hate my clock was broken because I actually agreed with Donald Trump. So, come on, computer. Don't be such a poo-poo head. Don't make me open up my tablet and try and open shit there. I, I think it was the Newsweek page. I really, really do. I think the Newsweek page was messing with my browser. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. And I don't want to go to Waterfox because it's worse. <laughs> Don't you just love this shit? I know I don't. Okay, let's see. What do I have? What do I have? Yes, you may say you're sorry, Beetle, but you don't have to. Ooh, in the future. Cool. Okay. Well, let's see. Vivaldi is not wanting to answer or respond. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to wing it. Ooh, hey. I have a joke book here. <laughs> Let me put my cheaters on. So, this is a joke book that my mother gave me. Come on, Vivaldi. Open up. Damn it. I know Dell Data Safe is not logged in. Shut up. I don't want you to be logged in. What the fudge sickles. Okay. So, one day, a Russian couple was walking down the street, and they got into an argument over whether it was raining or sleeting. So they asked a Communist Party official, Comrade Rudolph, if th it was officially raining or sleeting. Well, today it is officially raining, comrades, said the official walking away. And the wife said, I still think it's sleeting. And the man said, Rudolph the Red knows rain, dear. Durr. 
Nobody's laughing at Beetle. <sighs> this is really going to piss me off <laughs> if I have to open a different browser. Sunny beaches in California. Come on, Vivaldi. I know. I'll just do that and see if... Oh, Marshall's at college? Cool. Cool beans. Is that where you've been, Beetle? Is take Oh, now you must be alone. Okay. It's okay, sweetheart. Yay, Vivaldi's opening. Multiple pages. It's about damn time. Come on. Open. Says me. It says it's not responding. What the hell? Come on. Respond. Oh. Oh, shit. Now I got multiples again. <laughs> there went the black screen. This is going to be a fun one. I can tell you that right now. It's freaking Freaker Friday. By gosh and by golly. Don't do this to me, computer. You were being just fine. And then all of a sudden you decided to go wonky on me. What the hell? Don't be crashing on me. Not in the middle of my broadcast. You want to crash on me, you can do that after I'm done on the radio. But if you want to do it in the middle of a broadcast, that totally sucks. So, let's see. Let's find another joke, shall we? While I'm waiting for my computer to stop giving me the black screen. Which it is. Mm, this is going to be an interesting one. I know, I know. You don't want Okay. So that went away. Yes. Uh. Oh, see you, Vinny. Have an awesome stroll, sweetheart. It's okay, because I'm just sitting near putter and trying, waiting for my damn Vivaldi to wake up and smell the coffee. So, I'm going to read you another joke, shall we? You know, if I had my book I'm reading close by, I would read that to you. But I do not have my book that I'm reading close by, so can't do that either. So, okay, the old retirement gentleman goes into, uh, into the base hospital for his annual physical. Any complaints about your physical condition, the doctor asks, to which he replies, my sex life isn't as good as and often as it used to be, complains the general. So, ah, come on. Thank you, Vivaldi, for opening up. Now, we'll close that one. And we'll go to, I know you're trying to do your thing, sweetheart. Just do it. Just do it. Okay, back to this. So apparently his sex life isn't as good as it used to be. To which the doctor responds, really, General? Uh, when was the last time you had sexual relations? Apparently it was 1958, said the General. <clears throat> well, no wonder, said the doctor. That's an awful long time ago, and you're an old man. And the General replied, angered, what do you mean? It's only a little after 2100 net right now. Oh, good God. Oh, good God. Okay. Let's see what else is going to... Come on. I'm closing tabs to see if that makes a difference. And obviously it is not. <sighs> I love it when <clears throat> automated things just go all wonky. Let's see. How about... Oh, the Queen was showing the Archbishop of Canterbury around the royal stables when one of the stallions farted so loudly it couldn't be ignored. Oh dear, said the Queen. How embarrassing. I'm frightfully sorry about that. It's quite understandable, said the Archbishop, and after a moment added, As a matter of fact, I thought it was the horse. <laughs> okay, that's cute. I thought it was cute. How about this one? While I'm waiting on Vivaldi to freaking wake up already. 
Let me play. Damn it. <sighs> so, guy goes to the doctor and the doctor tells him he only has a day to live. He goes home to tell his wife, who asks him what he wants to do for his final hours. Well, of course, he wants to spend them having sex. They have great sex all night long. Finally, about 2 a.m., the wife says she's tired and wants to go to sleep. And he says, oh, come on, can't we do it just one more time? And she says, look, I've got to get up in the morning. You don't. <laughs> But um, pum pum. Guess what? My pocket opened up. So, let's see if I got other things that'll open up now. Well, at least the pocket one opened. <sighs> and Newsweek opened up. So back to the FDA approves psychedelic magic mushrooms for. Um, or the ingredient, psilocybin, for depression trial, which about damn time you start using nature. And this was dated yesterday. So the Food and Drug Administration has approved the use of psychedelic ingredient and magic mushrooms for a drug trial for treatment-resistant depression. Treatment-resistant, re you know, you're not treating someone there. You're dosing them. There's a difference. The agency gave the green light to Compass Pathways, a life sciences firm, to perform clinical trials using psilocybin. Now, this is occurring naturally in magic mushrooms, and psilocybin is a hallucinogenic which can cause feelings of euphoria. Ta-da! <coughs> excuse me. According to a statement by Compass Pathways, 216 patients with treatment-resistant depression will take part in the Phase 2 trial across 12 to 15 research sites in North America and Europe, which will start in the UK later this month. Cool. Now, researchers will dose participants with a psilocybin while they receive psychological support. Now, see that from everything that I'm reading of late, just from everything I'm reading, which does feel true to my little, my feels, my gut, you should treat someone with uh, therapy. And I'm not talking mind fucking them. There's an F bomb early in the day. You're, it's a surprising it's taken me this long to say it since I was having glitchy issues. But. You should be listening to them and finding out what's going on in their life and take them back as far as they can remember as to when they started feeling like ick. And then deal with the root cause instead of just drugging them up as they give them psilocybin. But now the firm hopes to cont uh, more countries will join the project um, as well when respective health bodies approve the use of psilocybin for clinical trials. So Tracy Chung from Compass Pathways told Newsweek that the clinical trial will be the largest ever conducted into psilocybin therapy. So if our studies are successful, we could apply for marketing authorization in two to three years. Now see, with them, uh, with a natural thing, you have to go two to three years. But how how fast does the shit from Big Pharma get to hit the market? Pretty freaking quick. They get pushed through pretty fast because they pay big bucks in order to get pushed through. And basically, the FDA is just a clearinghouse for them. Let's rubber stamp that bad boy. It has side effects. Well, we're rubber stamping it anyway. Oh, let's put a little black box way down in the corner where you have to get out a big old honk of magnifying glass to read all of the side effects that are very, very hazardous to your health. But hey, you're making money, which means we're making money. It's all good. That's the way they work, at least. So, back to this story. If our studies are successful, we could apply for marketing authorization in two to three years, she said, describing depression as a huge unmet need with 300 million patients worldwide. 100 million of these have treatment-resistant depression and don't respond to existing treatments. Which, when you stop and realize that in this world, most of us have been traumatized in one way or another, 
you know, until you get to the root cause of whatever caused the the trauma, you're not going to fix it until you deal with it. Got to face that fear and deal with it. Now, the approval comes amid what is known as the psychedelic renaissance. Growing evidence suggests psychedelic substances such as psilocybin, LSD, MDMA, ayahuasca, and peyote, um, ibogaine, is that how you say that? Peyote, ibogaine. And they could be used to treat mental illnesses such as depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder in a controlled medical setting. Yes, it's got to be a controlled medical setting. Don't you know? Don't self-dose whatever you do. Can't cut out that middleman of the medicine, that medical industry. Researchers are also exploring the use of ketamine, which is an anesthetic rather than a hallucinogenic. Now, a 2017 study published in the journal Scientific Reports showed depression patients who took psilocybin in a controlled clinical setting saw their symptoms ease weeks after treatment. Obviously, the controlled setting was just so that they could have documentation because I'll bet those people were accessing it after they got out of that trial just to keep feeling better. Now, the team at Imperial College London UK believes that the compound reset the participants' brain circuits. However, they acknowledge the trial of 20 people was small and further research is needed before the compound can be prescribed by doctors. Wow. Everybody was celebrating being able to have a marijuana medical card. <clears throat> now it's like, dude, I can get psilocybin <laughs> and not go to jail. So, um, in a separate 2016 study by researchers at the New York University and John Hopkins University showed a single dose of psilocybin decreased symptoms of anxiety in cancer patients for eight months when compared to a placebo. And the findings were published in the Journal of Psychopharmacology. Now, psychedelics are believed to help parts of the brain that generally have little connection to communicate and lower activity in the regions which do. Researchers, researchers at the University of Cambridge wrote this uh, in The Conversation. And magic mushrooms are not life-threatening unless large amounts or strong batches are taken. That is according to Alcohol and Drug Foundation. But researchers do not condone illegal drug use. Well, if it's frickin' nature, you do realize that fungi... The uh, fungus uh, kingdom is larger than the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom combined. It's nature at its finest, actually. So taking magic mushrooms without the supervision of medical professionals carries short-term risks such as vomiting, diarrhea, diarrhea loss of muscle control, uh, psychosis and seizures, as opposed to some of the other things that medical professionals give you that can cause all kinds of dastardly things, including death. Even years later, some takers experience flashbacks of hallucinations. I've never had flashback. Not that I know of. If I did, I, it was just like, whoa, that's cool. In any case, Berkeley University of California warned on its website, it's important to keep in mind that the conditions in these studies were strictly controlled and patients meticulously monitored during treatment. These drugs should never be tried outside of medical monitoring. Yeah, why? Because they want to be able to charge you that $90 an, uh, a visit or $120 a visit or whatever the hell it is anymore for a doctor's visit. Because, you know, that's their lifeblood. Keep them coming. Repeat customers. I got to tell you. Now, I'm going to go ahead and share this link real quick. Simply because there is another link in this one that I want to go to. Because it's like, oh, really now? You even clean the bathroom beetle? Dude. Let me put this over on RLO as well.
Ooh. Food and nutrition is having catfish pieces. Yum. Okay. Got it there. Let me put it on the effing site real fast. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe not real fast. So, I'm going to come over here and open up this related link. Also on Newsweek, under their health, and it's from three days ago. Coconut oil is pure poison, says Harvard professor. You know, those are the same ones that say that um, you have to focus on just one thing in order to be happy. What? No. I don't think so. So, um... Apparently, they say that coconut oil has been wrongly hailed as a superfood, according to a Harvard professor. Well, Harvard. <laughs> yes, unsaturated fats, such as those found in olive oil, on the other hand, should also be eaten in moderation. But they could... Oh, are you kidding me? Stop it. Shut up. Said damn Harvard thing after I already told it to shut up. So, <clears throat> oh, okay, let me get back to this. So, unsaturated fats, such as those found in olive oil, on the other hand, should also be eaten in moderation, but they could improve blood cholesterol. But maybe almost kind of sort of eaten in moderation. Yes, they should. Everything in moderation, dumbass. Don't overdose on anything. Not even chocolate. So, Michael's is the latest to question the health benefits of coconut oil. Last year, the American Heart Association updated its science advisory, urging the public to avoid consuming coconut oil if possible. Huh, I wonder why. I've been using coconut oil for a couple of years now. Several years now, and I have not noticed any adverse effects. Oh, hey, I just popped my neck. Yay. Now, following the analysis of over 100 studies dating back to the 1950s, researchers concluded... Shut up, you stupid thing. Um, yeah, it keeps auto-playing a video. Frickin' Newsweek. In any case, back to this. Uh, wait a minute. Okay. What's that? Um, yeah, there's lots of fake olive oil companies out there. Okay, I'm going to get back to this because apparently it wouldn't let me scroll far enough up. So I need to get to the top of this, huh? You think? So... Start over again. Coconut oil has earned and lost its reputation as a so-called superfood in recent years. And that's rightly so, according to a Harvard professor who has labeled it pure poison. Karen Michaels, professor of the Department of Epidemiology um, at Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, explained that uh, recently during a lecture at the University of Freiburg, Germany, that... Regardless of the advice peddled by unqualified and self-appointed online health gurus, consuming coconut oil carries a raft of health risks. According to a translation by business insider Deutschland, in her lecture, Coconut Oil and Other Nutritional Errors, she explains that the substance poses a greater risk to heart health than lard, as it is almost entirely made up of saturated fats. Now, these are believed to block our arteries. Actually, I had someone explain to me, someone with a medical degree, 
that uh, a lot of this stuff, you your blood cells, when they go through your veins and your arteries and the capillaries and everything, when the blood cells hit the sides, they kind of dent the sides and often enough and they will make little divots. But if you have saturated fats, if you have cholesterol, it goes in and it smooths those over again so it keeps them working properly. So, of course, that was just one person, and I happen to agree with them simply because I like what they had to say. I don't have the medical expertise, but still, I think a lot of this shit, you know, they tried to put all of the bad juju on saturated fats instead of sugars, and sugars is bad juju. <coughs> Excuse me. So generally, fats packed with fatty acids are those that are solid at room temperature. And according to the American Heart Association, the average person should only consume around 11 to 13 grams of saturated fat per day, or 5 to 6 percent of the total daily calories. Now, that was at the beginning of the article. So, um, yeah, they don't tell you how much sugar... They don't tell you how much of that other bad juju shit they put in. They tell you that how much the, the fat flushes that crap out. In any case, <clears throat> uh, following an analysis of over 100 studies dating back to the 1950s, researchers concluded that saturated fats raised so-called bad cholesterol, or LDL. Coconol, coconut oil was found to spike LDL levels in seven controlled trials. Well, you know, when I started doing coconut oil, my LDL started dropping. So, maybe I'm weird. Well, okay, there's no maybe to that, but still. Apparently, the public seems confused. In a 2016 survey, the New York Times, um, in the New York Times, prior to American Heart Association's revised guidelines revealed that 72% of the public versus 37% of nutritionists believe coconut oil is healthy. Now, Dr. Marie, or Marie Pierre St. Ong of the Institute of Human Nutrition at Columbia University in New York, who was behind the research indicating coconut oil boosts the metabolism and weight loss because it contains an ingredient called medium-chain triglycerides, in higher levels than most fats, spoke out last year to set the record straight. She told the American Heart Association that the oil she used in her experiment was 100% was medium chain, not the 13-14% to 14 medium chain oils that are most common. A person would need to eat 150 grams or 10 tablespoons of coconut oil a day to reap the benefits, which would be negated by the effects of consuming the substance in excess. Really? She explained that a healthy diet is a moderation thing, which, yes, it is. Any healthy diet is a moderation thing. Duh. Okay. I'm finally able to share this over on... Whoa on Ethan, so I'm gonna gonna post it real quick. Back to this. So, um, people don't want to face reality when it comes to their own dieting and their own health, she said. They want to believe in wishful thinking, but thinking you can have unlimited amounts of one particular thing and any everything will disappear um, is not based on reality, which that's true. I mean, any kind of diet, you need to correct your diet, you need to eat healthy food, and you need to freaking exercise. You need to move so you will burn those calories. Now, Helen Barrett, who is a qualified dietitian and British Dietetic Association spokesperson, told News Newsweek the pros and cons of consuming coconut oil needed to be considered within the context of the individual's diet as a whole. Which, yes, I agree with that. So, 
If you're taking it to promote fat burning, it is unlikely to happen, she said, adding that it is not low calorie fat and is expensive in general when compared to similar products. Now, if someone has close relatives with cardiovascular disease and they are eating lots of other foods containing saturated fats, I would encourage them to reduce their consumption of coconut oil. I would encourage them to reduce their consumption of the other things containing saturated fats as well. That's me. However, if a person eats very little saturated fat, loves coconut oil, and does not want to swap it for a healthier fat, the risk is likely to be lower. But people should be aware of what the risks are and be mindful that coconut oil is maybe not a good thing. And she added, I wouldn't recommend anyone start eating coconut oil. Well, I wouldn't recommend just eating coconut oil. Number one, it really doesn't taste that wonderful. Just the oil. I mean, I would recommend um, using it in cooking. And I would recommend using it for pulling, you know, for your teeth. Hello, rascal. But other than that, I wouldn't recommend just eating it. Okay, god dang it. It's got to be freaking Newsweek that's doing this shit. Because, yeah, it just locked up again. Some bitch. Come on, Vivaldi. Stop it. Yes, I know you're not responding. I see that. Okay. Oh, thanks for that link, Sock. I like that. That uh, current wind surface website. Let's see. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, Frumpy gets a dunce cap. Yeah, Grim. The reduction in consumption of propa uh, corporate propaganda is also a good idea. <clears throat> that stuff is, is, that's junk food for the brain is what it is. And all it does is gives you a quick fix and then you have to go out and get more. And then next thing you know, you're walking around going, I must pay taxes. My roads. The Donald is awesome. Okay, come on. I know you're not responding. Stop that. <sighs> Frickin' Vivaldi. Damn it, damn it, damn it. So. Pull the who are you pulling the plug on? Okay. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> yes, Grim, it is. Yes, it is. Come on. <sighs> well, I guess since I'm stuck here, because my Vivaldi is not responding. So, let's see. Let's read some of these headlines that I can see. 50 health foods that are secretly unhealthy. Well, I know pretzels are not healthy for you. Duh. I mean, I like them, but I know they're not healthy for you. Uh, 50 facts about the human body you probably didn't know. Gee, I'd like to go to that one, but my freaking Vivaldi is stuck. Um, how about, is it dangerous to wake up a sleepwalker? Depends on what they're doing. <laughs> um, daughter of daughter suspicious of parents' simultaneous deaths. 
yeah oh we had one of those out here although they were um they were exes and one of them was remarried and had been remarried for years and years and years but they both died on the same day within about two hours of each other it was freaking freaky wow um instagram adds a recommended for you feature yay casey anthony defamation suit goes to before a judge okay ouch kitty cat ouch your claws hurt so um oh and i saw that one too grimmy that's the one that kate shared earlier about john mccain <sighs> okay I'm going to break down an open water fox just because frickin' Vivaldi is being a poo poo head. Or maybe it's not just a Vivaldi, maybe it's my computer is being a poo poo head. Because water fox is not wanting to open either now. Hmm. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. What do I have going on in the background that is being such a poop? Hmm. There we go. Yay! Vivaldi opened! And it's working! Yay! 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 Whatever it was, it rectified itself. So, let me get this shared over to the FN site and to the RLO site real quick before I close Newsweek because you're being a poo poo head. So add that one, close that one, put it here and then I'll just have to, oops, go to these pages and pull it up later when I do my blog. I think I call BS on that coconut oil thing though. Seriously. Just because so many people are, of course, you know, it pisses me off. I, anywhere I go now, you have all these different coconut oils and some of them have great big right across it. Organic. It's like, really? God. So, of course, anytime I see the great big blazing organic on it, it's like, oh. And so how many of those natural ingredients are things that I don't necessarily want? Because I read somewhere, I don't remember where now, <laughs> that um, there is something in, um, there's a, a, a gland that a beaver has by its backside that they use to... Um, do as imitation vanilla flavoring in some foods and it's like what that's just gross so okay now that I've closed Newsweek because it was pissing me off let me go to my pocket because I do have some really cool stuff in my pocket um oh moral philosophy <coughs> Excuse me. One rule for life. Moral philosophy. Because if you have to ask, then you probably need it. Yeah. So. I'm going to go to. Seeing as how they're. Oh, here. I'll go to this one. Terry shared this one over on uh, realliberty.org. It's from goodnewsnetwork.org. Parents have the perfect solution to daughter sneakily ordering $350 worth of Barbies from Amazon. Now, it is taking forever, and that could also be... There we go. Uh, somebody would have been... Uh, mm, yeah. 
It would not have been a happy time in the old town tonight for that little girl if she was my kid did that. My youngest daughter pulled a couple stunts like that, and she was not a happy camper when I was done with her. Because she pretty much lost everything in her room except for her bed. So, <clears throat> okay, from the goodnewsnetwork.org. So when a mischievous six-year-old took advantage of her parents' Amazon account, they knew exactly what to do with the $350 worth of toys that arrived two days later. Caitlin first felt compelled to pull the online heist after she watched her mother order a purple Barbie Dreamtopia Rainbow Cove fairy doll from the internet. The toy was a reward for doing extra chores around their house in Pleasant View, Utah. But that apparently was not enough. When her mother Catherine walked away from the computer, Caitlin spotted all of the Barbie-related products and add-ons that were just a few clicks away. And a few minutes later, $350 worth of toys were being um, prepared for delivery. Now the next day, Catherine checked on the Dreamhouse order status only to find three pages worth of orders. And she was only able to cancel two of the orders. The rest were already on their way. So when Catherine confronted her daughter, she says that Caitlin gave her the look that meant she knew she was in trouble. Uh, yeah, we all have that look. <coughs> Excuse me. So the day after that, the Lunts were having a family get-together with their relatives. And as their cousins, aunts, and uncles were arriving at their house, a delivery man pulled up to the driveway and started unloading box after box. Well, when they, um, they were all bewildered by the heap of boxes, Catherine explained the nature of Caitlin's heist, and they all laughed over the youngster's stunt. Her cousin John took a photo of Caitlin with her prizes and posted it to Twitter, where it immediately went viral. We started hearing from complete strangers who asked, Aren't you mad? I'd be livid, which I would have been livid. Um, although Caitlin knew what she was doing, she had no comprehension about what she'd spent. I mean, come on, she just started the first grade. And I'd have to say, this is really my fault for not paying close attention. Which, yes, Mom, you should have gone ahead and closed the website down. But then Caitlin's dad had an idea. Why not turn his daughter's bad deed into a lesson of kindness? So instead of returning the orders like they had originally intended, the parents told their daughter to bring the toys to the primary children's hospital as a thank you for saving Caitlin's life as an infant. Just after she was born, Caitlin suffered a seizure and a stroke that caused her to lose 5% of her brain mass. After days of anxiously waiting for results, Caitlin was put on medication and her doctors told her she would regain the brain mass and will be fine. Now, Caitlin was a little depressed at first that we were giving them all away, but then she sat with a bunch of little girls who were patients and they opened all of the boxes together and laughed and played. And she had a lot of fun, but also learned a really good lesson. At the end of the day, Caitlin was happy with her to uh, that her toys could help other kids, and she now knows not to touch her mother's Amazon account ever again. Well, that is good. But still, I'm thinking there would have been some other repercussions at my house. I'm glad they worked it out so well, but ooh, at my house, yeah. Somebody would have been in deep duty. Let's just close that one. Let's see. Russian satellite showing very abnormal behavior in space. Really? Cool, Debbie Harry saying happy birthday to you, Grim. How awesome. Okay, let me put this over on the Oh, 
RLO site. Oh, I guess Terry already did. Never mind, I don't need to. We'll just do that. And let's see, did she put it on the effing site? Check and see. Oh, come on, Vivaldi. Don't be such a poo. I know, Anti. It is a good news site, so... They had to have a good solution, and I'm I'm pleased with them. That's awesome. But it's one of those things where it's like, little girl, there would have been some punishment involved around my house. Hey... Let's see. And, oh, come on. Don't give me their goodnews.org does not wish to post over here on Effen site. There has been an error processing your request. So, fine, fine. Maybe I can just put it over on mines, and then that way I can go back to it. <laughs> so, the Russian satellite. Thank you ever so much, uh, Guberzilla, for sharing this one from Fox Business. Uh, Russian satellite showing very abnormal behavior in space. What kind of abnormal behavior? Abby normal? Apparently, the U.S. State Department raised concerns about a mysterious Russian satellite orbiting space in a very abnormal manner, according to Christian Davenport, the author of The Space Barons. What? Is it a good... No, it's good news. Good news. Not a good new, although it would not share properly on the effing site, so I'll just put it over here on mines. The heck with it. That'll learn them. If I can type... Apparently it does not wish to. Okay. Fine. 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 No worries. We'll just cancel that over on Effen. Back to the Russian satellite, because you know them Rushkies. Okay, so we don't know for certain what it is, and there is no way to verify it, said Assistant Secretary of State for Arms Control, Verification, and Compliance, Yelim Pablet. Apparently they said that at a conference at Switzerland on August the 14th. That's a really long job title. Assistant Secretary for State for Arms Control, Verification, and Compliance. Wow. That would be like a really big plaque on your door. Now the government official also indicated the satellite could be used or could be used as a weapon. Excuse me, to take out U.S. Sim systems like GPS, Internet, and telephones in space. Do we have telephones in space? Really? Davenport said that the spacecraft, capable of interfering with what he calls the eyes and ears of the U.S. military and the intelligence community, should be um, a grave concern. Well, I think it's funny if it can mess with y'all's eyes and ears. I know, I'm naughty. So if there is a spacecraft out there in orbit, it could go up to U.S. satellites, national security satellites that we are so dependent on for warfare. Oh, take those bad boys out. You know, if you don't have any satellite imagery, then apparently you can't bomb on nobody, can you? No, they'll figure out ways. Um, in 2007, China fired a missile 537 miles above the Earth, hitting one of its own satellites. And Vice President Mike Pence called the action a highly provocative demonstration of China's growing capability to militarize space. While announcing the Pentagon plans to launch a space force as the sixth branch of the U.S. military. Okay, so 
you're pissed at China for supposedly militarizing space, and yet we're going to militarize space. Oh, it's okay if the U.S. does it, but not if anybody else does. National security. Apparently, the time has come to establish the United States Space Force, Pence said on August the 9th. Pence, shove it up the old chocolate whiz way, why don't you? Davenport said that the Department of Defense is working on developing a network of smaller satellites in order to make them a harder target for foreign adversaries to hit. Ooh, cool. So it's like Space Invaders. Anybody remember that really old Atari game, Space Invaders? I remember it. I used to play it a lot. So just as computers have gone from huge mainframes down to your iPhone in your pocket, satellite technology has made these massive satellites the size of a refrigerator and now the size of a shoebox. That's kind of scary. In his book, Davenport notes that Silicon Valley billionaires, most notably Amazon's CEO Jeff Bezos and Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk, are using technology and innovation to dramatically lower the cost of space travel. And yet, the military industri industrial complex needs billions of dollars to do their shit. So what these billionaires are able to do is help the Pentagon get those satellites into space more cost effectively, more reliably, and quicker. Yay. Okay. Thanks for that one, Goob. It's not nearly as fun as I thought it was, but yeah, it's an excuse for them to do some kind of BS. Okay, I'm going to go back to my pocket. Actually, I do have something here open that I'm just going to go to. It is from markmason.net. Three important life skills nobody ever taught you. It's from October of 2016. A couple years old, but I don't know that you necessarily need to update. Let's go through and see, shall we? Because obviously, you know, we're chasing satellites and chasing wonky things and got to spend more money on the military and yada, 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 blada, blada, blada. So let's see about some life skills that we need for all these wackadoodles out there. I imagine, for or excuse me, let me start this over again. Imagine for a second that I'm your father. I know that may bring up all sorts of awkward and unpleasant connotations, but stay with me here. And until we're done, just call me dad. Don't call me dad, guys. I'm Grammy. You can call Mark Mason or Manson dad. So, now let's pretend that we're having one of those intimate heart-to-heart -heart conversations that we all ideally imagine having with our fathers. Maybe we're sipping beers on a back patio, listening to the crickets, and watching the moon slowly find the horizon. Maybe we're laughing about some movie we just saw or reminiscing about that time you threw the cat in the toilet when you were five. Uh, that probably wasn't pretty. And in that photo perfect patio moment, let's pretend that I'm suddenly inspired by the gods and three beers to impart, impart some of the uber cliche fatherly wisdom to you that's supposed to completely rearrange the interior decoration of your mind. Let's pretend that I turn to you, my lovely son, daughter, ambiguous gendered person that I don't fully understand but still love and accept unconditionally. Really? And share with you, in all my fatherly wisdom, the three most important life skills that no one has ever told you before. And then you turn to me and say, what the fuck, Dad? You sound like an infomercial all of a sudden. And I'm like, uh, yeah. And then awkwardly launch into the conversation anyway. Because fuck it, I'm your father and you have to listen to me, whether you want to or not. So, yeah. Pretend all that stuff is happening. And then imagine, this is more or less what I would say. First important skill, 
how to stop taking things personally. An unfortunate side effect of our consciousness residing in our brains is that everything we experience in our lives involves us somehow. The car in traffic today cut you off. The cable news show you saw last night pissed you off. The company's massive growth this year gave you more money. As a result, we tend to have an inherent bias towards assuming that pretty much everything that happens to us is actually about us. But here's a news flash. Just because you experience something, just because something causes you to feel a certain way, just because you care about something, doesn't mean it's about you. This is hard to remember and not just because we're so embedded in our brains and in our own bodies. Because making everything about us in certain ways feels good for a short period of time. It feels good to think that everything that's good that happens in your life happens to you because you're this good, amazing person. But the price you pay for making those good experiences about you is that you must also make the bad experiences about you. You must interpret all of the bad things in your life to be about you as well. And as a result, you place yourself on a, onto a self-esteem roller coaster where your self-worth bobs up and down, experiencing dizzying highs and crashing lows with the merciless tides of whatever bullshit happens to be going on at the time. So, when things are good, you are the God's gift to the earth, who deserves to be recognized and applauded at every turn. When things are bad, you are the self-righteous victim who has been wronged and deserves better. So what is constant is this sense of deserving. And it's this constant sense of deserving that turns you into an emotional vampire. An antisocial black hole that only consumes the energy and love of those around you without ever offering anything in return. Okay, maybe that was a bit dramatic, but you get the point. And actually, I know some people like that. I really honestly do. So when people criticize you or reject you, it likely has way more to do with them, their values, their priorities, their life situation, than it does with you. I hate to break it to you, but other people simply don't think about you that much. After all... They're too busy trying to believe everything is about them. And when something you do fails, it doesn't mean you are a failure as a person. It simply means that you are a person who happens to fail sometimes. So when something tragic happens and you become horribly hurt, as much as your pain has you absolutely convinced that this must be about you, Remember that hardship is part of choosing to live. That the tragedy of death is what gives meaning to life. And that pain has no prejudice. It afflicts us all. Deserving or not deserving isn't part of the equation. Second important life skill. How to be persuaded and change your mind. Now, most people, when their beliefs are challenged, hold on to them as though they are a life vest on a sinking ship. The problem is that oftentimes their beliefs are the sinking ship, which puts the lie in beliefs, B-E-L-I-E-F-S. Now, for most of us, most of the time, our beliefs are not simply ideas that we hold to be true but they make up key components of our identity. And to question those beliefs means to fundamentally question who we are as a person, which, in case you didn't know, is really fucking painful. So, we'd rather put our fingers in our ears and scream, la 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 la, 
over and over and hope that that unfortunate evidence that we're wrong will magically go away. Take a person who doesn't believe in climate change. A lot of them are not stupid. They understand what the science says. They understand the arguments. The problem is that somewhere along the way they decided that not only was climate change something they believed was fake, but climate change denial also represented who they were as a person. Now, climate change is real. Man-made climate change, on the other hand, is not exactly the way they're telling the story. Yes, I will agree it's man-made. Chemtrails but not, it's not what they're blaming us for. Now, once they enter that territory, they're almost never going to fish them out. But this attachment to our beliefs doesn't just afflict science and politics. I've seen it afflict or affect most people's daily lives as well. Take dating. I've seen men who still held on to beliefs about themselves that they formed in high school that women aren't interested in nerds, that they need to have a bunch of money or a sweet-ass car to be loved. And maybe these beliefs served them and explained their lives when they were 16. But at 32, these same beliefs and assumptions were wrecking their dating life. You're going to be wrong a lot in life. In fact, you're going to be wrong pretty much all of the time. And in many ways, your ability to succeed and learn over the long term is directly proportional to your ability to change what you believe in response to your ignorance and mistakes. You may be asking, so how do I do this? Well, there is no how. It's all in your head. There is little, literally nothing to do here other than Mentally try on new perspectives and ask yourself, what if this thing is opposite to my assumption were true about me? What would that mean? And then psychically traverse the answer. It will be scary at first. Your brain will resist it. But of course, that's where the practice of this skill comes in. So try this. Write down 20 things in your life today that you could potentially be wrong about. And again, I don't mean material stuff. I'm sure my understandings of physics is sorely lacking in many ways, but that's not the most important thing I need to change my mind about. So what we're go uh, going for here is questioning some of those deep assumptions about your identity. I am not an attractive person. I'm lazy. I don't know how to talk to people. I won't ever be happy because I feel stuck in my life. I think the world is going to end next Tuesday. The more emotionally charged the assumption, the more important it is to write it down and challenge it. Then, after you've gotten 20, go through and write down what it would mean in your life if it were wrong. This will be, feel scary at first as well. A lot of your assumptions that you won't want to question, but think of it this way. How confident can you be in your beliefs if you've never challenged them? If you've never seen the other side? What we want to develop is that ability to see the other side. And those few occasions when it does appear more likely and more valid, hop on over. And I got to tell you, I have hopped on over to the other side a lot these last 10, 15 years. I've done an awful lot of, wow, I needed that. Holy crap, was I ever wrong. Now, the third important life skill, how to act without knowing the result. <laughs> I talk without knowing what I'm going to say next, so <laughs> this should be a breeze. So throughout most of our lives, almost everything has a clear result attached to it. In school, you write your term paper because that's what your teacher told you to do. At home, you clean your room because that's what your parents reward you for. 
At work, you do what your boss says because that gets you paid. There's no uncertainty, you just act. Teacher wants a paper, so you write it. Mom wants a clean room, so you clean it. But most of life, well, that is real life, doesn't work this way. When you decide to change careers, there's no one there telling you which career is right for you. And when you decide to commit to someone, there's no one telling you this relationship is going to make you happy. So when you decide to start a business or move to a new country or eat waffles instead of pancakes for breakfast, there's no way of knowing for certain if what you're doing is right or not. And so we avoid it. We avoid making those decisions. And yet I, ca I think of the song Free Will by Rush. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. So we avoid moving and acting without knowing. And because we cannot act on what we don't know, our lives become incredibly repetitive and safe. I get a lot of emails from people asking me how to find their life's purpose or how to know if they're in the right relationship or not or how to know if they're making the right change. And I don't reply to those people because I have no fucking idea. For one, no one else can decide what's right for you or for your life but you. Secondly, the fact that you're asking some guy on the internet or looking for it in a book or something is itself part of the problem. You're looking to know the result before acting. There's a great scene in The Dark Knight where the Joker shares his life philosophy. I just do things. Now for all of the Joker's flaws as a terrorist, mass murderer, armed robber, political assassin, but we'll overlook that for now, he does have a point here. One of those broken clock moments. Schemers trying to control their little worlds. The fact is, sometimes you just have to do things for no other reason than to do them. Do them because you can, because they exist. As George Mallory said when asked why he wanted to climb Mount Everest, because it's there. Add some chaos to your life. A certain amount is healthy. It stimulates growth and change and passion and excitement. Developing the ability to simply do things for no other reason than curiosity or interest or hell, even boredom. The ability to do things with no expectation for result or accolade or productivity or fanfare. It will train you to better make these big ambiguous life decisions. It will train you to simply start on something without knowing where in the hell it's going. And while this will result in a thousand tiny failures, it will also likely result in your life's biggest successes. You can start small. Open up meetup.com and attend something for no other reason than it looks interesting or is there. Go to Udemy or Khan Academy and sign up for a course for no other reason than it looks cool. Call a friend or family member and tell them, show me something new that you think is amazing and go from there. But there is a subtle trap here. Many of you will go out and think, well, Dad, that's me, remember? Well, okay, that's him. Dad said, I need to start spontaneously doing stuff so that I can be able to make those big decisions in my life despite uncertainty. So let's see, what spontaneous thing can I plan and engineer today? And you fail. Before you even started, you already failed. There is nothing productive about this. There is no progress here. Stop making everything you do about accomplishing some fucking goal. Or to put it another way, get good at wasting time in unexpected ways. Now, 
feel, excuse me, I have a poker game with a group of random friends and strangers to organize. So, this was from the gentleman that gave us the subtle art of not giving a fuck, the counterintuitive approach to living a good life. Thank you, Mark Manson. I like his articles. In case you hadn't noticed. And yeah, there's an awful lot of brain food in there. Um, oh, Grimmy, you're a neutron? Okay. Well, you know, energy vampires are those people that they just suck the life force right out of you. I know some of those people. And, you know, in, and then, you know, they're also those sa very same people that when things go wrong in their world, it's obviously your fault. Because either you didn't stop them or you joined in and somehow or another you're joining in made it not work out so well. And so, you know, I, yeah, there's people like that, that it's always someone else's fault. They do something stupid. They piss in their own post toasties and then they bitch at you because you made their post toasties soggy. Who cares that it smells like urine? Of course, post toasties, eh, tastes like bleh. Anyway, so. I know a lot of people that do that as well. Piss in their own post toasties and then bitch at you because it's soggy. So. Um. Put this over here on that RLO page. I really like that. RLO. Got RLM and RLO. Yay! And then I'll put it on the effing site because it's a lot easier over there. All I got to do is find little emoticons. And you know another reason why I like reading Mark Manson is because he drops F-bombs and that's so fun. I enjoy dropping F-bombs from time to time. <laughs> so... Yes, Grimmy. Was that you? Ah, okay. 29 times 2. I don't want to do 29 times 2. <laughs> 58. Um, you are a young whippersnapper, Grim. That's what you are. Just saying. So... Um, da, 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 da. I'm going to go to my pocket. Did you know that uh, Google named in lawsuit for illegal, illegally tracking users? Um, oh, users' movements who turned off their location history, which I never turned the location history on on my phone. Now, I do have another thing that has it but let's see let's just go to that one shall we and then I'll go check out the pig this is from bigleaguepolitics.com and they're also wanting to know which um, Hollywood individuals should lose their star as well Hmm. Oh, Grimmy, you just you just keep on a scrolling and, and a moving, hun. Cause yeah, you <laughs> I got you by a year, hun. Um. In any case, back to this article. So Google has been named in a lawsuit of illegally tracking the movements of millions of Android phone or U.S. iPhone smartphone users despite them turning off the location history in their phone settings. Now, the suit filed on Friday by plaintiff Napoleon Patas Pataxil in San Diego, California. Let me see what the date is on. Oh, 21st. So, just this week. Last week, Friday, is when he filed suit. Um, is seeking unspecified damages with class action status for all users of smartphones who wish to not be tracked by Google and who tried to prevent the surveillance by cutting off the feature. 
Now, this is an intentional violation of California's privacy laws and an intrusion of privacy. Google expressly represented to its users of its operating system and apps that the activation of certain settings will prevent the tracking of users' geolocations, the lawsuit reads. This representation was false. A partner at uh, Leaf, Cabrazier, Heinemann, and Bernstein, Michael Sobel, is representing this young man, Pataxil, and has yet to make any comments on the matter. Now, the suit claims that Google illegally tracked him not only on his Android phone, but later on his iPhone as well. Where he had downloaded Google Apps, he said Google's principal goal was to surreptitiously monitor phone users and let third parties have the same access. The alleged tracking by the unit of Mountain View, California-based Alphabet, Inc. was described in the August 13 Associated Press article, which said it has confirmed by computer science researchers at Princeton University. That's according to Reuters. Now, on Google's website under the Help section, it now reads that turning your location history off does not affect your location services on phones and reveals that some location data may be recorded through other Google services, such as Maps and the Search feature. Thanks, assholios. Now, the page previously indicated uh, by turning off one's location history places the user's visits um, were not stored by Google. And a letter has been sent by Electronic Privacy Information Center, a nonprofit public interest group, to the federal, U.S. Federal Trade Commission to look at Google's actions and whether it violated a 2011 consent order. Google's subsequent changes to its policy, after it has already obtained locations data on Internet users, fails to comply with the 2011 order. That's a quote from Epic's letter. Now the case is Pataxel versus Google, U.S. District Court, Northern District of California, number 18-05062. So, and from what I understand, wasn't just a few months ago, I read something about Google is the new F-bomb. So instead of dropping an F-bomb, just say, oh, Google. Which, yeah, you're giving them more attention. I don't know that I'd really want to do that. Let me put this over here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Grimmy, it is a bunch of damn space cowboys. Oh, there's some new people. Yeah. Okay, so let me post this over here. Naughty, naughty. Somebody got caught with their hand in the cookie jar, basically what that says. Which, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. And, you know, even if you're not using Google as your browser, there's lots of other... Well, my Vivaldi, and I think Opera as well, are probably using some kind of a Google base or something, which, yeah. Okay that posted and then I think it's time to go check out the pig P I double G over here on the politically ga incorrect gazette dot com or P I gazette dot com yes I know Vivaldi you're having a hell of a time opening up pages Uh, 
I do think I'm going to have to reboot the computer when I get done. Simply because. Probably wouldn't wait. So, their word of the day. Cult. Over here on the pig. It's a pay-for-play belief system wherein the more of your worldly goods you surrender, the more you are absolved from any meaningful control or accountability over your own life. Similar to liberalism, except they surrender someone else's worldly goods. I like that definition, boys. Thank you. That's a good one. In the quotable quotes section, free speech is meant to protect unpopular speech. Popular speech, by definition, needs no protection. That's from Neil Bortz. Once again, agreed. Uh, dun, dun. Bow. Oh, wow, they don't have very much in the... Um, what is this? Oh, all kinds of President Trump shit. So, in today's... Today in history, this date in history, the 24th of August, 1456, the printing of the Gutenberg Bible is completed. Wow. And things just went downhill after that. That's why we can't have nice things. This date in history, the 24th of August, 1853, first potato chips prepared by Chef George Crum at Moons Lake House. Near Sarasota or Saratoga Springs, New York. It's a red letter day here at the Free State of Pig. And finally, <clears throat> this date in history, the 24th of August, 1989. Pete Rose is suspended from baseball for life for gambling. And man, you look at some of the other shit that's going on in this world. And I think Pete Rose took it in the shorts is what I'm thinking. Lots of worse stuff going on in this here world that I think deserves a lot worse. Okay. Oh, they've got a, a list of things in the obje objective reality. They're, uh, um, top story this week. So let me see. For starters, let's see. Oh, this is going to be a trigger thing. Okay, so for starters, Pig extends hearty congratulations to the high school and college inmates of the graduating class of 2018. Now that you have your diploma of, or degree, you're going to need to forget all the social engineering crap you were force-fed by edu um, educrat eggheads for 12 plus years. The mere fact that you're here means that one or more of the following is true. Number one, despite the educrat's best efforts to indoctrinate you with cultural Marxism, multiculturalism, level playing field, sensitivity training, and diversity, your synapses are still working. Number two, you work for the NSA. Number three, you clicked something during a dizzy spell, and when the room stopped spinning, you were here. Or number four, your obsession with weird sex convinced you that Pig is a porn site featuring plump, uh, plumpers. Well, all right. I'll bet you Porcus heard this one. So, whatever the case, Pig is here with our post-graduation survival guide. Who knows? We might help you locate that elusive rascal, your inner rugged individual. And we don't promise to tell you what comes next, nor do we plan to save you from yourself, basement boy. But what, uh, what you do is your call. Our primary purpose is to alert you about some of life's speed bumps. Think of us as your very own This Is Realville welcome wagon. So we're not here to lecture you, no matter what your choice. That's right, choice. For the first time, you call your own shots, which is a vital step in regaining your individuality and securing your independence. Since the very first day of preschool to the moment you grabbed your high school diploma and told Principal Dude where to shove it, 
you have become, in some ways, the product of state-sponsored follow-the-herd indoctrination. Choice was not an option. Questioning authority was not an option. A difference of opinion was not an option. Hell, dodgeball was not an option. You don't want to get us started on that. I'm thinking somebody got a smack in the face at dodgeball. I took a few of those myself over the years. You know, those, those red rubbery balls, they stung like a mother. In any case, aside from all the feel-good gobbledygook and maybe some reading, writing, and arithmetic sprinkled in every once in a while, you ask yourself, what the hell did I learn? You better come up with a suitable answer because you're about to do a header into the transgen or transcendent brute called objective reality. Now, objective reality is a nasty bit of business that takes no prisoners. But we're not the heartless bastards that you think we are. Since you're not ready for warts and all reality, we'll jumpstart your brain with remedial enlightenment here and um, are some essential guess what items to prepare you for your header into the pernicious pest, objective reality, and its partner in crime, real life. Number one, life is not fair. Get used to it. Life rarely serves up an equality of results. It does, on the other hand, deploy the same opportunities to all comers. Number two, unlike the Little League in that blue state where you grew up, life keeps score, then picks winners and losers accordingly. Number three, remember how your rights suffocating campus had uh, designated free speech zones which you needed permission to use? Well, the real world doesn't work that way. By and large, Unless a property owner says otherwise, the good old USA is one big-ass free speech zone which you don't need permission to use. Number four. The first thing the real world does is rip off your training wheels, trigger warnings and speech codes, etc. And you're going to see things you don't want to see hear things you don't want to hear, and encounter concepts that you don't want to think about. That's why liberty is such a thrill ride. Number five, the world won't care about your self-esteem. The world will expect you to accomplish something before you feel good about yourself. Number six, Remember when your nonad BFF talked you into switching your major from sociology to gender studies? Yeah, no harm, no foul, since the real world both have you headed in the same place. And do you want fries with that career path? Mm-hmm. Number seven, get ready for some real diversity. A diversity of ideas. Those undesirables whom the thought police hounded off campuses are much more plentiful than you think. There are a lot of them. And they're everywhere you go. You can't make them shut up or go away. Number eight. Unless your family owns the company, you won't snag that six-figure salary or vice president job and a company paid BMW right out of school. However, in your trumped-up economy, you need to deem yourself lucky to pull down minimum wage at a fast food joint. It's all up to you. Number nine, if you think your teachers are tough, wait till you get a boss. She, he doesn't have tenure. Number 10, flipping burgers is not beneath your dignity. Your grandparents had a different word for burger flipping. They called it opportunity. And actually, one of my first job, well, my first job, aside from babysitting, I worked at A&W all through high school. And it was an opportunity. Made me money so I could buy things that mother would not cover. So, 
Number 11, if you mess up, it's not your parents' fault. So don't whine about your mistakes, learn from them. Number 12, before you were born, your parents weren't as boring as they are now. They got that way from paying your bills, cleaning your clothes, and listening to you talk about how cool you are. So before you save the rainforest from the parasites of your parents' generation, try delousing the closet in your own room. Number 13. Your, your school may have done away with winners and losers, but life has not. In some schools, they have abolished failing grades. They'll give you as many times as you want to get the right answer. This, of course, doesn't bear the slightest resemblance to anything in real life. Number 14. Life is not divided into semesters. You don't get summers off. And very few employers are interested in helping you find yourself. Do that on your own time. Number 15. Television is not real life. In real life, people actually have to leave the coffee shop and go to jobs. Number 16. Be nice to nerds. Chances are you'll end up working for one. Number 17. In school, you had that friend, classmate, or roommate who always had his hand out for a loan. He's gone, but he's been replaced by an uncle named Sam, a dude who shoved his hand much deeper into your pocket. Unlike your school moocher, Uncle Sam demands his cut up front, letting you have what's left. Number 18. The real world is going to piss you off. For example, the elected tormentors who do their best to make you miserable are in fact your chronically needy pal from school who went pro in the moochers big leagues. Number 19. Like it or not, it's still your life, so you might as well own it. Dare to celebrate your successes and have the spine to take responsibility for your mistakes. And finally, number 20. Speech silencing kill shots which work at school, check your privilege, for example, won't get her done in Realville. If you get snarky about it, you'll get up close and personal with an American classic, the knuckle sandwich. So, the uh, top story does go on for a while, but I am getting close to the end of my time, so I'll just go ahead and share the link of pigazette.com. And while you're there, say hey to Hambo and Porcus. Or not. It's okay. They're a couple of crazy guys. But y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com. Um, and no, Grim, flipping burgers is not supposed to be a career. But, you know, I actually know people, and in Salina, there's like a waiting list of people that want to go work at Cozy's, which is a little burger joint. And they make, yeah, they make pretty decent money there. And they make good little mini burgers. It was actually mentioned in the Reader's Digest Top 20 Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives article a couple years back. Cozy Burgers in Salina, and they are very good. And I tell you what, you have to, you don't go to the drive through You go inside, you order your burgers, you stay and wait for them to get done. By the way, you need to order half a dozen at a time. Um, but, uh, and then when you leave Cozy's, everybody will know where you've been. Because you will smell like Cozy's. <laughs> at least until you shower, and then you still might smell like Cozy's. Until you go home and wash your clothes. So, in any case, thank you all for listening in this evening. Be sure to stick around because Grimmy and Moose Girl will be on later on this evening for, um, oh, okay. Thank you, Goober. Later this evening with the Freakers Ball with Grim and Moose Girl. Tomorrow at noon Eastern Time, or I think that's when it is. I'll tell you what, how about I go over to realliberty.org because I do believe that uh, 
the RLM page has, there you go. I think it has a schedule on there. I think, I think, I think. Let me scroll down and I will find it. I'm pretty sure there it is. Okay. And you know what, Grimmy? I was going to download that app from my phone, but then it said it wanted, um, when I approved the downloading of that app, it said that it was going to, um, it would have access to, to clear my SIM card and access something else. And I went, fuck that shit. So, no, I didn't download it. Sorry, hon. I don't know if I went to the wrong, no, because I clicked on, I, something was not right with that. And so I said, no, ain't doing it. Okay, in any case, tomorrow at noon, Eastern Time, the dork table with Flash Rooney dork and Vinny dork. I hope, unless I'm otherwise corrected before I get done this evening. Um, what is that? Let's see. Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimmy's going to jump on the radio. And he's going to be playing some blues for y'all. And I'm actually going to get to be around so that I can listen in and play a little trivia. I'll sit here and I'll be knitting. I probably won't play a whole heck of a lot, but I'll watch because I'll be knitting. I got a little thingy to finish. And then directly following Grimner will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. So, yeah, Sunday's going to have all kinds of interesting stuff. Then Wednesday, I will be back for my Wackadoodle Wednesday edition of the Rocket Chair. Let's see. I got through that entirely too fast. Do I want to go back to... Did I share pig? I did not. Let's share the pig over here. Um, I know it was weird, Grim, but it it the in the authorizations thingy it said, "Thank you for the schedule, hun." It said that it had the it would be able to access and clear your SIM card. It's like, what? What? So I said, no, thank you. Um, thank you, Sock. There it comes. Okay. So, did I do pig? Yes, I did. Now. There we go. Had to get that shared real fast. So, okay. Where shall I go? Where shall I go? Uh, dun, dun. I'll go to my pocket again. Because I do have just a couple minutes left. So. Um, dang. Dang. Oh, I know. I'll I'll read this one real quick. Um, I posted this over on Facebook, and Facebook removed it from my feed. They said that it looked like suspected spam, and it was like, really? Seriously? It's from Appleseeds.org. Native American Code of Ethics. Number one, rise with the sun to pray. Pray alone. Pray often. The Great Spirit will listen if you only speak. Number two, be tolerant of those who l are lost on their path. Ignorance, conceit, anger, jealousy, and greed all stem from a lost soul. So pray that they will find guidna guidance. Number three, search for yourself by yourself. Do not allow others to make your path for you. It is your road and yours alone. Others may walk it with you, but no one can walk it for you. Number four, Treat the guests in your home with much consideration. Serve them the best food, give them the best bed, and treat them with respect and honor. Number five, do not, do not take what is not yours, whether from a person, a community, the wilderness, or from a culture. It was not earned nor given. It is not yours. Number six, respect all things that are placed upon this earth, whether it would be people, animal or plant honor the spirit in all things number seven 
honor other people's thoughts, wishes, and words. Never interrupt another or mock or rudely mimic them. Allow each person the right to personal expression. Number eight, speak of others in, or never speak of others in a bad way. The negative energy that you put out into the universe will multiply when it returns to you. That's why you should always say, bless your heart. All persons make mistakes and all mistakes can be forgiven. Bad thoughts cause illness of the mind, body, and spirit. So practice optimism. Number nine, nature is not for us. It is part of us. They are part of your worldly family. Number 10, children are the seeds of our future. Plant love in their hearts and water them with wisdom and life lessons. When they grow, give them space to grow. Number 11, avoid hurting the hearts of others. The poison of your pain will return to you. Number 12, be truthful at all times. Honesty is the test of one's will within this universe. Number 13, keep yourself balanced. Your mental self, spiritual self, emotional self, and physical self all need to be strong, pure, and healthy. Work out the body to strengthen the mind. Grow rich in spirit to cure emotional ails. Make conscious decisions as to who you will be and how you will react. Be responsible for your own actions. That was number 14. Number 15, respect the privacy and personal space of others. Do not touch the personal property of others, especially sacred and religious objects. This is forbidden. Number 16, be true to yourself first. You cannot nurture and help others if you cannot nurture and help yourself first. Number 17, respect others' religious beliefs. Do not force your belief on others. And finally, number 18, Share your good fortune with others. Participate in charity. Be willing to give back to the people so that people will live. Thank you once again for listening in. I hope you all realize and remember I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night.